Welcome to the Live to 110 podcast. I'm your host, Wendy Myers, and you can find me on livetoone110.com. And you can find this video podcast on my YouTube channel, Wendy Live to 110, and on the corresponding blog post. I'm having my friend Evan Brand on the show today. Uh, he inspired me to do this podcast, and I wanted to have him on to celebrate my 100th episode. Yay. <laughs> I meant to get some party hats and some little... Uh, like we should have. I know we could have done con- Google Plus because then you can put on like little effects on uh, our heads. <laughs> I get have some confetti and whatnot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But Evan, I have to say, you inspired me to do my podcast. I was a guest on your podcast uh, a couple years ago, and I thought if he's doing it, I should do a podcast. It was so much fun, and uh, I just I had a really good time. And I decided I'm like, whatever, I'm going to do my own podcast. I know. I don't even remember how I found you. Actually, it's. It's been so long ago. So much has changed, I mean, for you and I both in our business and personal lives. I mean, it's kind of awesome to be able to ride the train together, really. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's amazing how your podcast has grown. You host the Not Just Paleo podcast. Yes, ma'am. Hopefully people have checked it out by now. If they haven't, you've been on there like 10 times or something. (laughs) I'm coming on again, too, soon, hopefully. Yep, yep. (laughs) But we're going to talk today about your new program. It's called Stress Solutions. And you uh, you wrote a book for it. And you had four guest experts, including myself, uh, talking a little bit about adrenal fatigue and minerals, one of my favorite subjects. And uh, can you tell us a little bit about uh, about your program? Sure. Yeah. So, I mean, just like RIM Rehab, when I worked third shift at UPS, I was miserable myself. And I think the best teachers are the ones who suffer. I mean, we're all out here on the front trying to teach you how to be healthy, but we're unhealthy ourselves and we burn ourselves out trying to do this. And that's kind of what I did with sleep. And then, so I made that guide that you were an expert there too. And then now stress solutions, because I basically burnt myself out moving to Austin, getting a new job, getting engaged, getting married, moving in together for the first time. I mean, anybody who grows up basically understands when you become an adult that you have all these new responsibilities and stressors and that can sort of be the first taste of real stress for somebody because you're so sheltered and not in a bad way but when you're surrounded by the good vibes of your friend and family you know you don't really get a good taste of what real stress is in isolation because you're protected by them in a way so for me, I really got that taste of it and my health suffered and a lot of my clients email me about stress and you know it manifests in different forms. Some people get depressed by stress, some people get anxiety from stress and then some people just simply get, they just feel like crap and they're not motivated to do anything because their brain's on overload. So uh, Stress Solutions was kind of a creation from that and basically I just wanted to distill all the information in the science literature and recommend things that are actually going to help people that are not prescription drugs that are going to sidetrack people's results. I mean, so many of my clients now, not that it's my goal, I don't take people off drugs, but I mean, so many people want to get off of their anti-anxiety drugs, you know, Xanax and all that stuff because their life just took so much of a toll that they just wanted to grab for anything. You know, they were drowning in stress. And so hopefully, you know, we can talk about how you can prevent becoming one of those statistics and becoming sort of a, you know, a test dummy for these drugs that most of the time make people worse over the long term. Yeah, I hear you with uh, being a fellow uh, uh, health coach or, you know, trying to convey a lot of health information on our websites. You know, I have succumbed to stress and uh, I can work myself to myself to death because I love what I do so much. And I know yourself as a nutritional therapist, a nutritional therapy practitioner, and a personal trainer, that you also work very, very hard. I know you, you work very long hours to produce your podcast, and you've got a couple programs now. You've got Stress Solution. What's your other one that you have? The first one was RIM Rehab. Yes, yes, yes. Uh Yeah, and that was the one where you came on and we talked about just all the different ways that people mess up their sleep. But... That, I mean, that's still that's still a bestseller, but for me, stress was sort of the biggest thing because I felt like, you know, I'm sort of like the food chain of life and the food chain of health. Stress is one of those things at the top of the chain where if your stress is off, you're going to be impairing hydrochloric acid production, for example, so you're going to have bad digestion. So you may be having IBS issues, which stress is a huge component for IBS. Even in myself, you know that and what my struggles have been. So... You know, if we can try to fix things at the top of the food chain, maybe the other, I guess, where the train derails 
all those other things will sort of slip back into place, you know. So sleep is a good place to start, but I think stress is even a better place to start because there's dietary stressors, there are emotional stressors, and all these things can impact the brain and the body and the way it functions. So, I mean, if you fix that, you're really doing a lot of good. So rather than I just throw you a bunch of supplements right off the bat. Yeah, I'm glad that you created this type of program because I, I believe stress is the number one killer. It's the, the number one cause of our heart attack and all these, this domino effect in the body that depletes the minerals and causes adrenal fatigue. And that creates its own cascade of, of events, uh, reduced hormone production, which causes its own problems. And it just has this huge domino effect that destroys our, our health and destroys our body. Um, can you talk a little bit about uh, some statistics or some information about uh, how stress is so detrimental to our health? Oh, yeah. I mean, the main thing is cortisol. I'm sure you've you've said cortisol a million times on the show, but I mean, basically, it's not always bad. I mean, cortisol in the light of health coaches and things like that, it always comes up as sort of this really bad thing, and it's not always bad, and it's not always high. So, I mean, that was sort of, you know, as far as research, what I discovered Everybody's talking about high cortisol. I have high cortisol, which is causing me weight gain around my midsection and things like that. But oftentimes people will burn themselves out and burn themselves hot or burn the candle on both ends, whatever term you want to use, for so long that they end up with low cortisol. And now you can't get yourself out of bed. And then you have high cortisol at night or higher cortisol at night when you try to actually lay your head down on the pillow and you can't go to sleep. So that was something that was pretty interesting for me because I just assumed that anybody who had stress, you just had extremely high cortisol and you were just eating all your muscle away, which I've experienced myself, which that's that's definitely the case in a lot of people. But uh, sort of just trying to bring home the message that cortisol is just a hormone and it's not automatically evil and you have to balance it. It's not something that needs to be too low or needs to be too high. And, you know, there's one particular supplement that we could talk about a little bit later that's super helpful in the research for actually regulating cortisol as opposed to jumping on an adrenal support supplement just to crank something up. That's not automatically the first step for the recovery process. Well, let's talk about what is, what is the first step. What is the first thing that you have to do to reduce stress? I think you even said this to me one time. You said you just have to learn to say no. <laughs> yeah. And Stop overscheduling yourself and just stop overbooking yourself. Stop spreading yourself too thin. I mean, that's the first thing in your life. You only have so many hours in the day. As far as like how do you actually make that actionable, a recommendation that I use is to tell people to stay away from social media and stay away from your email inbox the first thing in the morning. So if I get up and I need to write a blog article because that was my, my goal for the day, I'm going to try to write that article first. I may not finish it, but I'm at least going to try to start it because if I jump in the email inbox, I'm going to get lost and distracted and focused on those tasks and the clients and follow-ups and all that. You know how it goes. And Secondly, if I get on social media, then you start the whole envious process of, oh, how popular was so-and-so's book? And, you know, even if you're not in the health world, I guarantee people can relate to the envy that's created from social media. And it's really, in my opinion, it's sort of um, a, a tool for depression if you use social media in the wrong way, you know. So that's kind of like my first step is to change the way people start their day. And also just by using a gentle alarm tone instead of like a nuclear bomb sound, you know, you're going to be much <laughs> happier there. <laughs> yeah. I had a friend who had that. It was ridiculous. He had on, it was almost like one of those sort of like if a nuclear bomb's coming, those sort of videos you watched <laughs> in school as a kid and it's like the yeah. sirens, yeah. you know, and that's his, that's his alarm tone. I mean, talk yeah. about waking up with a burst of adrenaline. I mean, so now personally... You know, my wife and I, we use a, a little like forest sound. I mean, iPhones and Android, they've all stepped their game up as far as alarm tones. And there's plenty of forest sounds and birds and peaceful things that you can choose to wake up to now. Yeah, that sounds really relaxing. But or I could yeah. put you back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's that's the hard part. I'm, I'm ready to get up. And Hannah, she'll just try to snooze it and then go back to sleep. But in my opinion, that's another stressor because once you're up, you need to get up. You need to get out of bed and get your day started. There's no reason to try to start throwing off your circadian rhythm and things like that. I think a key also is just going to bed early enough so you don't have to have an alarm clock. I, I don't know why I just wake up every morning at between 6.30 and 7 a.m. So I just I don't use an alarm clock. 
ever. That's great. When I think when we first started talking, my schedule was not like that. But now I'm basically a morning person and I suggest anybody if they want to have great energy or even better energy to try to do what you're doing, wake up with the sun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, sunrise is a biological process. The sunrise is not just, oh, there's the sun. You know, you come out and you're driving to work and, oh, there's the sun or, oh, there's the moon. No, those things are there for a reason. I mean, we just, when we're trapped inside of buildings all the time, we lose track of those. But those are really important regulators of our system. So try to wake up and get your eyes exposed to that bright light as soon as possible. And then when it's dark, get in bed. You're not a loser for going to bed early. I'm 24 and I go to bed at like 9 p.m. and I feel <laughs> great. Like a grandpa. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, my grand that w which is ridiculous. My grandpa, he goes to bed at 11:30 and he's done it for like 40 years. I don't know how he does it. Oh, wow. So. Yeah, and I think that's very very important to you know wake up early, uh, you know, not sleep, not go to bed so late you have to sleep in until 9 a.m. or whatnot, but go to bed early and then wake up in the bright light and expose your eyes to the very very bright light to regulate your circadian rhythms. It's it's that's a key. In, in regulating your happiness and regulating your stress levels and getting your hormones and circadian rhythm, you know, on the correct, you know, timetable. Yeah, and I mean, for you, you're in California, so it's sunny like every day, so you're kind of spoiled. But for people that aren't spoiled and they live in northern latitudes, I mean, seasonal depression is a real thing. And a lot of that has to do with the amount of light exposure. So, you know, I, I use and recommend light therapy boxes all the time. I use that in combination with the infrared bulb that you had me pick up. And that's a great way to start your day in the morning to still get your energy levels. But if you're going to jump from your house into your car into your office, you're never going to get a chance to expose yourself to the 10,000 lux, which is a measurement of brightness. You're never going to get a chance to expose your eyes to that if you throw on the sunglasses right when you get in the car because of the glare. You know, So you have to get that eye has to get hit by that natural light you know that that is so important yeah yeah i absolutely agree so why don't we talk a little bit about the stress response you know what happens to someone's body when they are they're under stress yeah so i mean there's a couple different stages there's basically three stages of the stress response the first one everybody knows very common in the health world the fight or flight response this is sort of the you know, there's nothing better. Everybody uses this. There's nothing better than it. You're being chased by a tiger. Okay. This is the fight or flight response, except now the modern day tiger are bills, bosses, and uh, I want to keep it in the bees. Let's just say bitches. Anywhere you encounter bitches, whether it's at the grocery store, whether it's you're always going to find some grumpy person that's going to try to ruin your day. And that can put you in a fight or flight response. So this is commonly what people are going to experience more than once per day. So we're built to handle this. We're built, we are human, humankind is built to handle acute stressors. That's where we exceed. But we're not built for handling chronic acute stressors. So it sounds like kind of a double negative, but basically if every five minutes there's a, a life or death situation popping up, you're not built to handle that. And so you head into stage two, which is the resistance reaction where your body is sort of I wouldn't say shutting down, but you're going to be depleting all of your minerals. You're going to be depleting your vitamins, which is why, you know, things like minerals that you're a, a huge proponent of, that's why they're so important. You know, these spark plugs get depleted and you start running on three cylinders as opposed to four cylinders. Now you're still going to get through life, but you're going to need that extra cup of coffee. You're going to dump your minerals even more. So it begins to snowball effect. And then you head into stage three, which is the exhaustion phase. And this is where people don't even have the opportunity to get out of bed with energy anymore. I've heard of people, and Wendy, this is for real, and you may have too. I've heard of people where the husband or the wife has to deliver coffee to the bed to get a person out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have heard of that before, sadly. I mean, <laughs> that's ridiculous. That is the stage three. That's exhaustion. Once you're there, you're going to need a lot of work. And uh, after talking with you, a lot more time than I first guessed and estimated to recover from something like that. But a lot of people are entering and are currently in the exhaustion phase. And it's not a good place to be. Yeah, I know. My father had to have three cups of coffee before he could start his day. And, you know, that was when I was in high school. So maybe, you know, 25 years ago, 20, maybe a little bit more, 25 years ago. And then, you know, 20 years later, he developed cancer because he was even 
20 years prior to him developing cancer, he was drinking three cups of coffee a day and just not living a healthy lifestyle at all. And so it just, it takes time for stress to take its toll. Um, so that, it, Wendy, that makes me think of a question for you. What, I mean, do you think the coffee played a role in his diagnosis? I mean, was that something that was, you know, in your opinion or experience depleting nutrients, depleting minerals? I mean, how, how do you think that played a role for somebody to take advice from that? Um, I don't think the coffee is really um, a, a big problem. Um, I drink a little bit of coffee, coffee every day, a half a cup, maybe to a cup. And that's okay. But when people are getting into three cups or more a day, that definitely takes a big toll on the body because it raises cortisol. It's, uh, it, and it depletes minerals, like you said, depletes calcium and other minerals. And it just keeps revving up your adrenals, revving up, revving them up, revving them up every time you, you take that stimulant, which is that caffeine. And that continues, that further tires out your adrenals. So it does contribute in subtle ways every single day week by week, month, year after year to disease and illness. So you, you have to be careful. You have to take care of your adrenals. Yeah, makes sense. And you know, on that same note, a lot of people want to know, what am I doing to add stress to my life? And so, you know, stress doesn't have to be just what happens to you at work or at home. I mean, stress could be listening to very loud music while you're working out. There's a lot of my clients where if I have to pull the headphones away from them and make them work out in silence, or at least try to turn the volume down, it impairs their workout. And I'm not saying that music's evil, but that's just one of those things where you're just pounding and pounding the nervous system, and the nervous system is just taking a battle, and it has to respond you know, to this input. So even watching negative news before you go to bed, I mean, that could be a very significant stressor that could impair your sleep quality. So you know, looking at all the inputs, I mean, when you're in traffic, are you – getting really pissed off in traffic or are you listening to Wendy's podcast and you're kind of chilling out and, <laughs> and and you're accepting you're accepting the fact that there is traffic and that, and, and that it is what it is and you're just kind of letting it go so a lot of stress has to do with the mind and the mindset and how you're actually accepting or rejecting the situation that you're put in so I mean all of us are going to have hard situations all of us are going to be put in acute stressful situations maybe some acute health issues you know god forbid a car wreck or something like that but you know every chance that you get you know take the opportunity to take the lighter side try to laugh something off I mean we all have the same end destination on this planet so it's about restructuring the way that you respond to these events you know that can really make a huge impact and and you know you and I've talked about this off air that's a huge healing process for the both of us yeah, I totally agree with you. You do have to change your responses to stressful situations. Um, if I, that's why I, I recommend all my clients do meditation. And uh, I, I spent many, many years doing yoga as well. I spent you know 25 years doing yoga. And that really helps you to change your, your perception of stressors and change your responses because it's all about perception. Life is 90% perception. So if you can to change your response to something, that makes all the difference in the world. You know, so someone could walk up to me and start calling me names or doing whatever. It's not going to bother me. It's not going to raise my cortisol because I've trained myself over so many years to control my responses to stressful situations. It's a practice. Yeah, and I mean the same thing for food too. I mean you can make yourself sick because you're telling yourself that a food's going to make you sick. Oh, I had one trace exposure to gluten. Now all my health problems are going to you know, come back. That could be the case, but there's sort of a mental aspect too where if you're having to eat a piece of beef that may not have been 100% grass-fed organic beef, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. It's going to keep you alive. Maybe it's not – in your best interest to freak out about it, you know? So that's sort of a restructuring that you just have to, you have to have some level of acceptance with yourself and realize that you may never have a perfect life or a perfect lifestyle. I, I totally agree with you. I have, I've had so many clients that they're not doing this right or not doing that right or they, or whatever it is. And they get so stressed out about doing their mineral power program perfectly or taking the right supplements or eating the right food, eating carbohydrates at the right time or all these minute details. And people can get so stressed out about making the right health choices. And I, people just need to relax. <laughs> it's okay. Definitely. It's okay if you make mistakes. Definitely. Yeah. And on, on that same note, I mean, there's a lot of industries in the health business that are built up around convincing people that it needs to be more complex than it really is. 
And I'm here to tell you that there's a lot of BS out there. And for example, this is very beneficial, intermittent fasting, very beneficial in the right person. However, it, there's a whole you know piece inside of Stress Solutions where I'm like, hey folks, we have to understand that we are not in the parasympathetic state. So parasympathetic, the rest and digest, you know, you have to be in that state to adequately basically assimilate or break down and put the nutrients into your body, absorb them. And we're not living in a peaceful state of mind 99% of the time where intermittent fasting should always be used because fasting raises cortisol. Why does it raise cortisol? Well, from an evolutionary perspective, probably because it would have stimulated you to get off your butt, get out of the cave and go hunting because yeah. cortisol is sort of a mo motivating hormone, which is why people chase it and they try to keep boosting it with coffee and whatever. So, you know, in the right person, someone who has a good relationship and a healthy relationship with stress, and they have some of the diet stuff in place, they're not going through a divorce currently, things like that. Intermittent fasting may be beneficial. And uh, something that another expert, Dr. Justin, that he recommended people do, if you want to try something like that, Try it on the weekend where it's not going to be as stressful to your system. But that's kind of the goal of, of this whole talk today together is that stress is not, like I said, it's not just what happens to you at work. Intermittent fasting, you know, doing bulletproof coffee and then not eating all day, that is a stressor. That adds to your stress barrel that could overflow and cause you to burn out or have anxiety or depression or whatever. So, And that's everything. exactly what I did today. I drank, did you? I had bulletproof coffee and I didn't eat until noon. You better eat, Wendy. <laughs> and it was uh, it was stressful. It, I really I felt my my adrenaline pumping, and uh, I felt kind of a little bit shaky, and I had a little anxiety and mind racing and stuff like that. And it's just I I try it every once in a while, and I just continue to realize it's not for me. Like I I want to try it for weight loss or whatnot. Really, my main motivation is weight loss. <laughs> uh, but forget the uh, you know health benefits of it otherwise. But yeah. uh, but I try it, and it just it doesn't work for me as much as I I continue to try to do. It. I just have to accept the fact that it doesn't work. And I, you know, recommend anyone, you have to experiment with your body. You have to find out what works for you. You can't make any, you know, recommendations across the board that everybody should try intermittent fasting or any other kind of health, uh, health thing. Definitely. And I was fasting this morning too. I went to go meet with this guy in town and I, I don't know, I guess I just got busy and I didn't eat anything either. And I start, start, started to get shaky and I kind of, smack myself and was like man I should have I should have ate something you know just a little bit of protein or something to hold me off but you know I break my own rules sometimes because I get busy but then I pay for it and then I get shaky and deal with some of the mood things too so I mean you know I've been there done that which is why I feel like I'm credentialed enough to tell people not to do it yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah do as I say not as I do <laughs> right so what are some of the things that you do to control your responses to stress well, meditation is a is a big part, but you know, I'm a big fan and proponent of float tanks which are popping up around the world. I'm sure there's one within a few hours of almost everyone listening. It's essentially just a big room. And depending on what type of tank you're in, it's kind of like a spa in a way, but you're getting in a big bathtub essentially of warm water that has about a thousand pounds of Epsom salt in it and you're floating on the surface of the water so you're getting you know some transdermal absorption of magnesium so you're gonna feel very relaxed but it's called rest therapy when you start looking into PubMed for it but there's 50 percent or greater reduction in cortisol levels after using one of these things so, I mean super super helpful it's basically the lazy man's way to meditation if you don't want to actually try to meditate you just jump in a tank and you could just kind of drift off in space and by removing gravity because you're floating that you know gravity is a huge stressor on the body so by being weightless you know that takes a huge load off of you so that's super helpful uh, what else do I like to do I like herbs Wendy you know I'm a big fan of herbs I really enjoy adaptogenic herbs uh, I think for, I really think for women that you know, even before menopause and especially after menopause, I think that every woman could benefit from just a little bit of adaptogenic support just because, I mean, being a mom, that sounds stressful. I don't know what it's like, but it's got to be stressful. The childbirth, I'm sure that's got to do something to your nutrient stores. You know, it definitely puts a huge impact on the adrenal gland function of your own, you know, of your own body, you know, postpartum depression. I guarantee part of that's from being so depleted. So, 
you know, in my experience, a little bit of adaptogenic support. I like to use rhodiola. They call it the golden root. I really love rhodiola. It's very safe. There's not many contraindications with anything else, and I love it. And when I knew that I was in, when I was talking to you about me moving back to Kentucky here, uh, pretty recently, I was taking 500 milligrams of rhodiola root every single day for like two, three weeks. My stress level, it was, it was bizarre. I almost felt like what I had to go through wasn't real because I didn't feel it. So basically what I'm saying is like on the calendar, I'm moving in, which I'm already here now, but I was moving in like a day or two and I didn't feel it. I wasn't anxious. I wasn't tearing up my stomach like I thought the stress would do. I felt great. So, I mean, I'm a testimonial that this stuff works and it regulates your nervous system sort of behind the scenes where you're not act, you're not actively trying to change your response. It's just sort of working on, you know, balancing the nervous system out. I handled the situation much better than I would have if I didn't have that adaptogenic support. So those are my top two favorite things. I agree. I take ashwagandha every night to go to sleep and it has been life changing for me. I sleep better. I wake up really, really relaxed and rested and I just kind of float through my day <laughs> for the most part. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you get the, and you look at the ocean a lot. So I, I think that's probably part of your medication as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, but I, I agree. I suggest to all my clients to, to try ashwagandha. Um, there's another supplement I really like. It's called Adrenal Response by Innate Response. I have it in the Live to 110 store. It has ashwagandha and rhodiola and holy basil and just a handful of adaptogenic herbs that I think are wonderful for, for people, for anyone trying to reduce stress or trying to sleep better, etc. Yeah, while we're on the, the subject of supplements, the one that I mentioned earlier, the cool one supplement, you know, to help regulate cortisol is called Relora. And Relora is helpful for people that have both low cortisol and high cortisol. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, a lot of adaptogens are the same way, you know, shijandra, it's like a little berry, you can get sh organic shijandra powder. I put that in my matcha tea, I feel great after that. I highly recommend that, but relora is a combination of, it's a magnolia, I can't pronounce the Latin name of it, but it's a type of bark combined with another like proprietary plant extract, and, and it's like a patented blend of these two plants, but it's called relora, and it's super helpful for women that are trying to lose weight because if your cortisol is high and then it's low and then you're just all over the place, this is this can really kind of smooth out that whole process. So, and there's a lot of great science, you know, that I put inside the book about specifically Relora and, you know, other supplements too. I'm kind of a geek when it comes to that. I have a huge supplement stash. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> so where can you get Relora? Just on Amazon. Okay. Yeah, so Now Foods, they make a great Relora. Uh, there's also, I believe it's Source Naturals. Now, it is a tablet for for them, which I'm kind of against some of the, you know, the binders and things like that. But, you know, I've had, I've still had good success with it. It just depends on the client whether I would use a capsule or a tablet. But if you can find a, a capsule version, I would go for that. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, not all, all not all excipients are bad. Not all the binders are bad. Um, some yeah. of them, they're just kind of like a pressed pill and they I think they dissolve real easily. I know in my ashwagandha, it seems like a pressed pill. It dissolves easily. Yeah, I use the uh, the organic India ashwagandha. I think it's on. Yeah, it it, it must be organic if if it's in the brand. But it's uh, five hundred milligrams. Mm -hmm. So that's what I take. But yeah, that's a good brand. I, but I still haven't figured out, you know, because there's that kind of potential there for people to have a nightshade allergy that may not be able to tolerate ashwagandha. For me. The last time I took it, I had a little bit of stomach issues, but it was hard to say whether it was traced to some food or some supplements. So that would be something for people to kind of test and play with. Yeah, and that that's true. There are a lot of people with nightshade sensitivities. I have a handful of clients that have that and they can't take ashwagandha. But the other option is the rhodiola. There's lots of adaptogenic herbs people can take. Have yeah, different it, options. I'm I'm debating actually writing an entire like book and program on adaptogens. I mean, I just I'm such a huge fan. Yeah, yeah, I am too. I'm a fan now. <laughs> For a while, <laughs> I was like, I don't like herbs, you know, because herbs can have, um, you know, a lot of metals. They can have aluminum, and you know, they absorb a lot of nutrients from the soil, which is why they're so nutritious. But they can absorb a lot of metals too. But you know, uh, like many medications, uh, many supplements, there's always pros and cons to everything. Um, but for me, I'm just edging more towards the fact that herbs can have much far more benefits than negatives. And uh, if you know, if you use an infrared sauna, hey, 
guess what? You, you're going to get rid of all any metals that you might ingest in your diet or through your supplements. So Yeah, that's good. You, you, I changed the tide maybe for you because I think like <laughs> one of the first episodes that we talked on my show, you were like, Evan, you got to be careful with those herbs. Those heavy metals are going to get you. So <laughs> Yeah, I kind of changed my tune a little bit. I, I just Again, I just think every medication or supplement has its pluses and minuses and you just have to weigh it for yourself if the, the benefits outweigh the cost. Everything has a, uh, has a cost, everything. Definitely, and for me, I mean, the benefits of you know you sleeping better, if I were your practitioner, if all it takes for you is maybe the potential to get a small amount of something in, but yet you're sleeping better and, and you know regulating your nervous system, that sounds like a definitely a winning situation there, you know? So I would keep you on it. Yeah, for me, ashwagandha was life-changing. It just, it, I just, I'm such a happier person on it because I sleep better and just uh, when you sleep better your whole life is better <laughs> because you're definitely just... yeah so let's talk a little bit about some, maybe some other supplements that you that you really like to help reduce stress and relax you oh man we could geek out here Wendy um, so I'm a big fan of things like passion flower or valerian root However, you know, the chapter is called Stress Busting 201. That's the last chapter. And I kind of make the distinction and kind of categorize different supplements based off how they respond or how they act in the brain. So GABA, your calming neurotransmitter, basically the breaks of the brain. If you are, I mean, when people want to relax, they go drink a beer and you're basically going to be boosting probably serotonin as well but definitely you're going to be affecting GABA and you're going to get that calm sense that sort of kind of waves over you and people start chasing that so things like passion flower and valerian they act on GABA receptors so they will relax you and they can be useful for acute anxiety and acute uh, stress where you need to relax however I don't recommend them long term and I make the distinction there because it can downregulate GABA so just like if you were to take testosterone for too long, you're going to downregulate testosterone, your testicles are going to shrink, and you're going to be a little sissy boy, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> so the same thing with these supplements. You know, you really need to make the distinction, and I do it for you, but make the distinction between what is called a GABA antagonist and what is just something that just naturally can help boost GABA levels. So, uh, so those are two good ones that are short-term. A long-term solution would be something like L-theanine, just the amino acid that you know we've talked about that's in green tea. If you drink matcha tea, which is basically a whole baby green tea leaf, you have a lot more L-theanine, so you're going to be significantly boosting your GABA, therefore calming your nervous system even more. And it does have a little bit of caffeine, so if you want that little boost, uh, it's balanced out by the theanine. So you get a nice focused but calm state of mind from theanine. And then rhodiola, I mean, that's one that is in there as well as a long-term solution. So there's two of each. Yeah, I always uh, thought it was just odd how after I drank green matcha tea, I would feel kind of stimulated, nice and stimulated and buzzed, but also at the same time very, very relaxed and a calm state of mind. It's a great combo. Oh, I love it. So I basically, I'll do... I have a Keurig, which I'm still a little bit skeptical about the plastic and heating the plastic and all that, but whatever. So I use, I basically pull out the little cup and I'll just hit the tiny little shot button for the hot water and I'll just let the hot water go. I guess I could technically use a tea kettle, but I haven't got situated in this new house yet. So anyway, I'll just do a little bit of that and I'll do a half teaspoon of organic matcha. You want to look for the ceremonial grade. It's much higher quality and more theanines in there. And I do that, and then I do a half teaspoon of organic shijandra powder, which is also an adaptogen. You put that in there. And then if I'm feeling froggy, I'll do a little half teaspoon of some raw honey. Mm. So. <laughs> What's froggy? <laughs> froggy is just like, ooh, I want a little sweetness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm froggy all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very froggy all, the, all day. <laughs> yeah, and I definitely identify with uh, you talking about stimulating GABA using passion flower. I actually take GABA myself. Um, you, uh, I love uh, Dave Asprey's GABA Wave. Um, once I started taking that, I was having some issues with night waking and whatnot. Started taking the phenylated GABA that he has and just knocked that out. It, it was amazing. And All right, well, we, will. we do have to spend a couple minutes here because phenyl GABA, a.k.a. Phenibit or Phenibute, however you ask people, 
I have a lot of experience with this, Wendy. Yeah. And I had a friend who was taking – it's great. It's a great supplement, but it's a very double-edged sword because that phenyl GABA, when you add that phenyl group to the GABA molecule, it jumps right through the blood-brain barrier. And if people aren't watching this, you need to watch the video so you can see me stroke my head. But <laughs> it sneaks right into your brain, and that phenyl GABA has a potent effect, and it severely downregulates GABA very quickly. So long story short, a friend was taking about 500 milligrams of this phenyl GABA, which I think GABA wave is somewhere around that dosage. And he loved it, and he had endurance, better sleep, better energy. Um, it's a, it's used and recommended a lot for social anxiety. If anybody, any of my clients have social anxiety, it's something you can take and sort of mimic the effects of alcohol without the sort of drunkenness, you know? So you could take a little bit and go to a party. I've definitely done that myself and you feel great. Um, however, he went up from 500 milligrams to a gram and then two grams and then three grams and four grams. And at this point, this guy has no natural GABA production. He's having panic attacks without it. He can't sleep without it. When he's running out of his, um, We'll call it fin a bit, but phenyl GABA, when he's running out of his supplement, he had to make sure that the UPS guy had another bottle in the mailbox the day that he ran out or he wasn't going to sleep that night. So oh, wow. very, very powerful. And in Russia, phenyl GABA or fin a bit is actually a, piece, a, a prescription only available through a physician and it's typically for anxiety disorders or severe panic disorders. So for it, for us to have it in the U.S. as a vitamin still, I'm actually shocked that it hasn't been pulled from the shelves and get and got put behind a wall from a physician because it's so powerful. But I have some in the other room, and, yeah. I, and I enjoy it. So. <laughs> yeah, I enjoy so mine too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, GABA's my drug of choice for sure. Um, yep. But I, I agree with you. I Just like any supplement, you have to be very careful with it. And even though it makes you feel good, that doesn't mean you can just use it, uh, you know, without any limit. Um, I, I test my neurotransmitters. I do a test from neuroscience to test my neurotransmitters. And I was low. I didn't, I didn't take it until I found out that I was low in GABA, that I actually did need it. And I'm going to do another test in a couple of months just to see if I've kind of reached my GABA max uh, before I, I continue with it. But yeah, I agree with you that uh, uh, the phenylated GABA really, really works. That's why it's probably ideal to use that for a limited period of time. Um, I have another GABA on my website. It's called Pharma GABA. And um, it's, a, it's, all, it's not phenylated, but it's another very, very good GABA um, that's uh, very helpful in, in improving your GABA levels. Um, but I think a short amount of time usage is, can be really, really helpful for some people. But it's almost like Xanax. Uh, people can become yes. very, very addicted to Xanax and other benzodiazepines. And those work on GABA. Those increase your, your GABA. But they deplete it as well. And so the getting off those is one of the worst addictions that there is. It's just, it's horrible. And um, yeah, just like your, your friend, he, he kind of induced that, say, on almost that benzodiazepine addiction where when he doesn't take his GABA, it's just toast. So can you talk about how to maybe uh, prevent that from happening? Yeah, well, you just have to be careful. And I would honestly not use anything if you are going to specifically use phenyl GABA, GABA wave, whatever it is, Finibit, you know, I, I've, I have a big 100 gram thing of it and I just take a small pinch and just put it on my tongue. Once you, you know, at first it tastes horrible, but eventually you know the effect, so you love the taste of it. It's kind of weird. But anyway, I would just recommend people not use it more than once once a week, honestly, Wendy. I would like to say twice a week, but honestly, it's a slippery, slippery slope and you snowball and you just love it so much, so quickly that you're just going to take it. Oh, it's just another little pinch, just another little pinch or just a capsule or just a capsule. And then before you know it, you know, you're having anxiety without it. So that's my recommendation. Stick to once a week of about anywhere from, I'd say 250 to 500 milligrams max. And, you know, just to give you a testimonial or I guess a research study about how potent this stuff is, inside of Stress Solutions, I talk about Finibit and how there was one study where it documents a guy who had to be uh, admitted to a an addiction treatment center for specifically Finibit, and how they had to get him off was to put him on baclofen, which is commonly prescribed muscle relaxer that also works on GABA receptors. So they had to take him from this over-the-counter vitamin, put him on a prescription, baclofen, and then wean him off of baclofen to get him off of Finibit because Finibit is so powerful that 
there, there's the, the, you know, the medical industry at this point has no way to just specifically wean you off that. They literally had to convert him over. And maybe it was easier to access the baclofen. I don't know. But either way, they had to convert this guy over. So that would basically be like the same thing. I mean, you'd have to switch over to Xanax and then wean yourself off of Xanax to become okay again. You know, so it's very dangerous. One of the most dangerous supplements out there. However, it's one of my favorite. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's so dangerous. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about uh, minerals that you can take to reduce stress and relax your body. That's my favorite subject. Yep, definitely. So, I mean, magnesium is good, but magnesium can be, you can sort of overdose on magnesium and throw off your other minerals, which I think I've done myself. I was doing magnesium lotions, magnesium oils, Epsom salt baths, float tanks. I was drinking the natural calm, the magnesium citrate powder. I mean, it got to the point to where, you know, if you're going to the bathroom too much or it's not <laughs> normal, you need to back off. Yeah. So I personally. <laughs> I've personally had to back off magnesium just a little bit, but you know, calcium and magnesium, I think you even turned me on to those as in a combo. I was always a fan of magnesium, but never calcium. Those have a really good, a really good one, two punch. Um, but I mean, potassium can be helpful too. You know, all of them, all of these different minerals, uh, can be really helpful. Uh, other minerals, I mean, I like zinc. I don't, I don't particularly remember any anti-anxiety relief or anti-stress relief from zinc, but it's just a really good support in general, about 10 to 15 milligrams for men or women, just to generally support your hormones. I mean, especially for men that need testosterone, you require a lot of zinc. And if you're going to be having sex, you're going to be depleting some zinc there through semen. So you might as well give yourself a little boost and put it back in the tank, you know? So Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah you need zinc to make testosterone. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm a big fan of magnesium and like any mineral you can get too much, you know, magnesium lowers sodium levels. So you have to be careful. It can affect your adrenals. It can uh, reduce the effectiveness of your adrenal glands if you're taking too much magnesium. You can get too much of a good thing. I guarantee I did that, Wendy, because, you know, as much magnesium I was taking, I was probably taking a combined total of one gram or more per day. My stress response was, was reduced. I felt m like my adrenal glands were sort of haywire. I was not responding to stress as well as I should have. So, you know, I'm sort of a, a walking test dummy here to, you know, make people understand. Yeah, magnesium's cool, but you don't need to apply it in 10 different ways like I did. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's one of those things you have to balance your minerals. I think a lot of people don't, they don't understand that you have to uh, take minerals and that you need. You have to take a targeted nutrient therapy and to to improve your body and reduce stress and you have to have take them in a balance in, a, in a, a balanced way as well mm -hmm. it can be hard to figure that out but you're due for another hair test i did a hair test on you yeah we should do I another know, one we should do i know we'll one. see what happens what do you think would change i mean with with all i've been doing lately well, hopefully, you know, your calcium was a little bit high. Like, you know, join the club. A lot of people, they have adrenal fatigue and then their calcium levels go up and their copper levels go up in their body. So hopefully your your calcium has come and your magnesium have come down a little bit on the hair test. We'll have to do that. I'm excited. Yeah, we'll do another one for sure. Sweet. <laughs> so what are some of your other uh, tips that you like to reduce stress? Oh, man, I could go on for hours. Honestly, just getting outside again, being being outdoors, being in nature. This isn't just a you know, a health coach disguised as a hippie, you know, telling you to get outside. I mean, there's studies where Japanese researchers are using a thing called Shinrin Yoku, also known as forest bathing. And this is essentially just getting outdoors and being in the forest and there's a lot of aromatic compounds, sort of like essential oils where they're basically airborne chemicals, airborne molecules that the body recognizes that can create significant reductions in cortisol, but also it can boost your NK killer cells too. So by going out into the forest, I mean, and, I, and there's documented research inside of, you know, stress solutions where there was one study in particular where Japanese researchers took like 420 yeah, it was 420 exactly subjects, and they took them out to 36 different forests in Japan, and they took salivary cortisol levels and measured them. They had over a 50% reduction in cortisol and over a 23% boost in the immune system even after one month of going back to the city. Wow. So if you just take one weekend with your kids or your husband, your spouse, whoever, one weekend, and Wendy, you're at the ocean, so I mean you're getting plenty of you know negative ions and good stuff there, but – 
for other people, if you can take a monthly trip to the woods or some sort of very immersive natural environment, you're going to be basically giving yourself a dose of anti-cancer medication. And I mean, that's in the literature now. So it's one of the most powerful things that you can do for your health, getting outside of the buildings that are made with synthetic materials that are going to be off-gassing chemicals, carpets, synthetic leathers, new car smells, get away from all that and get out in the trees. And, you know, that's one of the most profound things that I could tell people to do, really. Are you into earthing also, going out in nature barefoot? Yeah, I mean, not right now because it's muddy and wet. But. <laughs> you can still go for it. <laughs> yeah, you know, if I if if I didn't already mop up this new kitchen floor so much, I would probably go out in the backyard and do it. But I've already been like sweeping the little doggy's paws off, you know, cleaning up her paws. But yeah, I mean, I'm I'm super into to earthing and grounding yourself. I do have a grounding mat that I use sometimes. I was a little bit more diligent about using it, but I've just sort of it's one of those little hacking tools that just kind of sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't. But I mean, definitely I like to climb trees, so. I don't know why, but I like to climb trees. So <laughs> it's great exercise. It's a really good skill to have to be able to climb something and use your own body weight and manage your body weight. So touching trees, touching nature, touching dirt, gardening, you know, those are all good ways to earth yourself without just standing bare feet on the grass. But of course, that's a good way too. And can you talk a little bit about some of the, the tests that you can do to monitor your stress levels uh, so that you can, you know, have a little guide as to how all the stress reduction techniques you're doing are working? Yeah, so what you do is you turn on your bathroom light, you look at yourself in the mirror, and you see how many gray hairs you have. <laughs> <laughs> and the more gray hairs that pop up, the more stressed you are. <laughs> oh, so that's a pretty, that's a porny, pretty corny joke, but... Um, in reality, you know, you can do the adrenal stress index test. They call it the ASI. It's a 24 hour salivary cortisol measurement where basically, you know, I have a little toothpick here. So you take a little cotton swab, you put it on the inside here and take a little measurement in the morning, like midday, evening, and then at night. And basically you want your cortisol to be highest in the morning because that's your go, go, go hormone. And you want it to gradually slope down and you don't want it to pop back up. That's what happens. It pops back up for people and then they can't sleep. So you want it to gradually slope down, not quite like a very scary roller coaster, but like a little kitty roller coaster. So one that just kind of gently slopes down and then you want your cortisol to be lowest at night. So the ASI will measure that and it will just show whether there is any spikes whether that could be caused from caffeine or blood sugar issues or, I mean, if you almost got in a car wreck or you had to go into a meeting, I mean, even that could secrete cortisol. And if you're about to go into a meeting and you're nervous and you measure it, that could probably show up there, you know, because you're still going to respond to stress. But generally speaking, you want it to be highest in the morning and kind of slope down at the night. So that, that's one way to measure it. Another way to measure it is just to see how you feel when you wake up in the morning. If you don't feel rested and recovered, you have bags under your eyes, things like that, that's a good chance that you're probably going through some sort of adrenal stress. And that doesn't mean you, uh, you immediately need to jump on adrenal glandulars or anything like that. But I mean, I definitely support vitamin C. Vitamin C is stored in the adrenal glands. It's like the gas tank of vitamin C in the body is in the adrenals. So if you want to just pop on some a couple grams of vitamin C complex, not just ascorbic acid, but some vitamin C complex, you can do that. You can do some of the adaptogens we talked about. But you'll know. If you're stressed, you'll know. You, you won't recover well. You'll be sore if you are in an exercise routine and you're sore for two, three, four days and it just doesn't feel like your chest should still be that sore. I mean, that could be a sign that you're not recovering. Yeah. And yeah. you're stressed. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I like that you talked about how the cortisol levels uh, get, can be high for various reasons. Another one is if you had food sensitivities. If you have a high reading, kind of doesn't look normal on your adrenal a ASI test, it can be from food sensitivities. At, at night, if you have high cortisol levels at night, that can be a sign you have gut dysbiosis. You have gut bugs. Uh, that need to be addressed. So you can get a lot of information from an ASI test. I actually um, am about to become an FDN, a functional diagnostic nutritionist, and I offer these on my website right now. You can get an adrenal saliva test, and, and if you want an adrenal urine test, the urine test can give a lot of information about metabolites of your hormones and things, give you a little bit more information. So if you, any of you guys listening want to do that, sign right up, live to 110 store, 
And I think that's really, really important to see where your hormones are at, uh, including your saliva and your melatonin, et cetera, um, because you can correct these naturally. You can take a DHEA and pregnenolone and a progesterone and try to help balance your hormones naturally. You don't need to do hormone replacement therapy, which is what you're going to get if you go to even a naturopathic doctor. They're automatically, for the most part, going to want to put you on replacement testosterone, estrogen, and progesterone. It's not the way to go. Yeah, it's not even the answer. And I mean, you can further set yourself up and you can sort of, I don't know if I would say accelerate your issue. I don't know if that's the right word, Wendy, but I mean, you can definitely sort of catapult yourself into more issues if you just immediately, oh, you have low testosterone, we're going to throw you on testosterone cream. I mean, because then you start converting that over to DHT and DHT is sort of basically the they call it kind of like the aromatized version. You don't want that stuff around. You don't want that lingering around. I mean, that's when you start increasing your risk for, I don't know if it's specifically prostate cancers, but I mean, cancers in general, that's sort of where my specialty is not, but definitely know that, you know, you, you don't want to, to have too much of that stuff. Just, you don't want to just, that's not a blanket recommendation where somebody should, everybody has low testosterone. Let's throw everybody on the cream. That's a horrible, horrible thing that I've seen so far. Yeah, I mean, there's very, very well documented nurses' health study that people that are on high estrogen, you know, estrogen replacement therapy for women, even if it's opposed with progesterone, it can lead to cancer. It's a very, very high cancer rate for doing hormone replacement therapy. I think it's much more intelligent to do a program like Stress Solutions that you offer and do some adrenal cortisol testing. And, it, you know, it takes two to three years or more to heal your adrenal glands. And that's with a complete diet, lifestyle, supplementation, detox plan, complete plan to, to correct your adrenal glands. It is not easy in our stressful modern day world. So I think it's a good idea to do adrenal cortisol testing and hormone testing and uh, apply some intelligent allopathy with replacing some of these hormones or giving your body the, the precursors to the hormones like pregnenolone and DHEA just so that you get some, uh, some symptom relief until you're able to heal your adrenal glands because it takes so long. I know I've been working on my adrenals forever and I still feel like, when is this going to happen? <laughs> you know, like, you know, I definitely, I'm worlds apart from where I was, say, five years ago, just worlds uh, different. But sometimes I feel, you know, I'm reaching for perfection. I'm aiming for perfection. I think I'm doing better than, you know, 95% of the people out there. But sometimes I, I just feel like, how long is it going to take for me to have a, a really perfect, uh, adrenal cortisol test. Yeah, and you know, you make a great point and I would like to add that we're not broken by default. You know, humans we're not all broken by default. I mean, certainly you could be born sort of disadvantaged, you know, if your mother was extremely stressed out during pregnancy and things like that. I mean, Wendy, we could do a whole nother stress part two on this because something that that I was kind of branching off here in my mind was that basically it's called the pregnenolone steel and essentially when you're under stress that you're going to be sex hormones are sort of at the bottom so basically you have all the important stuff that that gets made at the top of the food chain all these hormones come from cholesterol oh so making sure you're not on statins or that you're sort of working with a qualified practitioner to you know get off of the statin i don't know any safer way to say it and making sure you're getting your your quality your quality cholesterol and that way you're going to make all these hormones, but you know if you're under significant stress, your body is going to do all that it can to go down this pathway to make cortisol because you need to respond to a stressor. And so for you to have sex hormones, you know the DHEA and things like that, DHEA is sort of the the opposite hormone that's kind of in relationship with cortisol. You're not going to have that now. You're not going to have testosterone now. You're going to start getting man boobs. Your libido is going to be impacted. Women are going to start having issues. They're not going to feel like having sex. It's not just that you've got older and that your wife doesn't like your beer, your beer belly. You know, she may just be so stressed that she cannot make sex hormones, so she has no libido. Yeah. So by fixing your stress upstream, you're going to be improving your sex, you know, your sex life as well. So, I mean, the stress is a virus that spreads into every single aspect of your life and it can ruin marriages you know so it's really really important this isn't just something to take lightly this is one of the most important topics and one of the most important things i think you could do for your health and your happiness i mean who wants to try to be intimate with someone and you can't because you don't have the hormones necessary not me 
Yeah. So. Yeah, I like that you brought up the pregnenolone steel because when you, we are stressed out, that pregnenolone gets stolen to make cortisol. And then it, it, we need that pregnenolone to make testosterone and estrogen. And so I think it's a good idea if people have stress, they can take a little pregnenolone to help prime that pump, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And because you, you have to train your body, so to speak, to stop using it for cortisol and using it for the hormones instead. Yeah. And so, and, and a lot of people, especially men, you know, they could benefit from just a small dose of DHEA as well because cortisol just gets so out of balance. You know, testosterone and estrogen are supposed to be in a balance and things like that. So is cortisol and DHEA. So if you're super, super stressed, you know, you can pump up just a few five milligrams or so of DHEA and that can sort of help counteract some of the effects of cortisol being eating your muscles away, stressing you out, causing hair loss, whatever. I mean, the effect, there's probably a thousand side effects of messed up cortisol rhythms but well why don't you tell us a little bit more about your program stress solutions sure yeah i mean they can check it out if they want to on my website they could just visit not just paleo.com and you'll see it right there at the top i have in the menu bar it says i believe it says programs now or products and you'll see it and right there in the menu bar you'll have access to stress solutions so uh wendy you're an expert so wendy's one of the experts that talked with me for about 30 minutes and you know if you think she geeks out on the podcast she super geeks out and takes these you know professional products seriously so um, she's on there and I think we talked for about 30 35 minutes and then there's three other experts um, Dr. Justin this guy Dr. Greg Emerson and uh, Dr. Tim Gersmar and those three guys are on there and then the 71 page guide that I wrote myself where all the citations are linked without the supplement protocols some of the alternative therapies, more about float tanks, more about acupressure mats. I mean, dozens of things. Literally, it's kind of like I could make a 200-page book and make it seem like it's a big deal, but that's silly. I'm a no-fluff guy, so here it is, 71 pages of killer, no filler. There you go. So it's at the <laughs> website. Well, I, I commend you. I, it looks like an amazing program, and I was really honored that you asked me to be a part of it. And I, I definitely recommend the listeners out there, if you're feeling stressed out, you're waking up exhausted, and you just you can't calm down, you're having anxiety, depression, et cetera, maybe you should check it out. You, you have got to have a bunch of tools in your arsenal to reduce stress, especially in our, our, our toxic, stressful modern life. You've got to start thinking about this every single day. How do I reduce stress in my life? Yeah, and so right now, I mean, people always want to know, well, what is this program and how much does it cost and all that. The price changes because I play with pricing because that's what you do as a health entrepreneur. You play with pricing to see how it works. Right now, at the time of this recording, it's 27 bucks. I mean, that is less, that's, you know, over 100 less than it costs to do a personal consult with you or I, Wendy, except there's probably six consults worth of advice built into that. So... 27 bucks. There you go for now. It may go up by the time you get to it. So I don't know. You might want to go get it. <laughs> <laughs> That's not bad. That's a really good deal. Yeah. Well, Evan, thank you so much for coming on the show and tell the listeners where they can find you. Yeah, just check out my website, notjustpaleo.com. You hear it. Paleo is cool, but it's not everything. So notjustpaleo.com. Check out the podcast. All that stuff's there. My newsletter, I have I think it's four free guides. It's probably getting a bit ridiculous over there, but you get like four free guides now. One that's 29 pages in itself called Calm Your System to where if you're not ready to pick up a full program, you could get that just for free and learn how to take control of your nervous system today. So um, there, that's one of many things over there. Well, Evan, again, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you, Wendy. You rock. And listeners, if you want to learn all about detox and how to heal your health conditions naturally, go to live210.com. To learn all about mineral power at mineralpower.com. That's my healing and detox program that I use to heal and recover my health and get my mojo back. And go to my new online health program, bodybiorehab.com, where I talk about the five pillars of health. It's going to be you know, it's a $49 program where you can learn all about the right kind of diet that you should be eating, the right kind of supplements that you should be taking, basic supplements, um, how to exercise properly, some really hilarious videos of me exercising, and um, how to reduce stress. I have a little module in there myself about reducing stress because it's so important, and, um, and how to detox, how to detox properly, just stuff that you can do at home. So go check that out at bodybiorehab.com. Super excited about that. Thank you so much for listening to the Live to 110 podcast.
Why don't you tell the listeners a little bit about, uh, you know, about yourself and your story? Yeah, so I was diagnosed with two autoimmune diseases, both celiac disease and Hashimoto's disease about three and a half years ago. And before that, I really hadn't had any health complaints. Um, I had been vegan for about 10 years, and I really believed that a plant-based diet was the best for staying healthy and uh, I was very active and so my world kind of all came crashing down and I got these autoimmune diagnoses and surprisingly I didn't feel better on a gluten-free diet which was the the biggest prescription by my medical professionals they said go gluten-free you have celiac disease your thyroid labs are normal despite having antibodies and uh, in the months following my diagnosis, I continued to get worse. I started having some neurological symptoms. I had pleurisy, which is a symptom of lupus. And so there was this period where I really felt like the uh, my autoimmunity was progressing. Um, and so that's really where I found dietary change. And I started to learn about ancestral health and ancestral nutrition and paleo. And I made the 180 from vegan and I really have not looked back. <laughs> was that hard? Uh, yeah, it was It was so hard. And I think that I would ever have been able to do it if I hadn't been totally bedridden and not able to function. Um, it was a decision that I made that was just for my health. And it, it went against everything that I believed at the time. But it was the thing that got me better. So... Yeah, I'm right there with you because I was vegetarian and then vegan for, it was only a couple of years and I only had very mild symptoms. I had some fatigue and trouble mm-hmm. losing weight. I thought, oh, hell no. <laughs> as mm-hmm. soon as I realized my diet was uh, was causing, you know, contributing to my health, mild health issues, um, mm-hmm. I made a really quick turnaround. Um, but do you feel that your, your vegan diet contributed to your health issues? Yes. And actually, I think that I never would have had such a deep and like dark crash had I not been vegan. So I was having issues with, I mean, it was like multiple nutrient deficiencies on top of two raging autoimmune diseases. So, you know, I was having things like neuropathy and neurological issues that were B vitamin deficiencies. I was having trouble breathing and fatigue and hair falling out because I was so anemic. Um, So that definitely compounded and I think was a big reason why I got so ill. Yeah. So why don't we talk a little bit about, you know, for any listeners that maybe aren't totally familiar with what are, what is autoimmune disease? Yeah, so simply autoimmune disease is when your immune system attacks your own body. So in my case, um, my thyroid is attacked by my own body and my small intestine. And um, 